Now we are on to a developing a formalism which brings out what field theory is about and how to deduce results from field theory. Uh, so last time we start, so what we are doing now is forced harmonic oscillator uh, or rather Green's function. So, <coughs> so the <coughs> we use the Lagrangian formalism and the Lagrangian is of course integral dt of uh, and we had set m equal to 1, so half q dot square plus half omega squared q squared. q times f this is what it was and then what we do here is that we propose a Fourier transformed uh, variable for q and similarly for f uh, right our definition will be g equal to the convention for the Fourier transform. So if we do this then we can see that half q dot square, so this is our definition of Fourier transform. Convention, so do not worry what the g is, any function g this is the convention. Now we try to calculate what happens to the half q dot square or to q dot square. So q dot square will require you to take something like this and uh, differentiate it under the integral sign. So if you carry out this exercise all you have to do is take this expression twice, I am very sorry de, de right. So we will have de de prime and because you differentiate you get a i e down tilde of e and here e raised to i e prime t q tilde of e prime right we are just squaring q dot but from this we get uh, integral d e d e prime then uh, minus e times e prime and then the q tilde e q tilde e prime and then e raised to i e plus e prime t. So if we look at this under the integral dt sign, so
then under integral d t this becomes delta function of e plus. So, this becomes integral d e d e prime over I need not well let us write it down anyway times the minus e e prime and then q tilde e q tilde e prime, but delta e plus e prime. So, in using up one of the e integrations we will get d e over 2 pi and hmm? 2 pi delta thank you. So, 2 pi is gone very good yeah and uh, minus e squared e squared times q tilde e q tilde minus e and that is it. Now, we have to put it alongside this omega squared q squared it has to be added on to omega squared q squared, but q squared is just going to have without any i e appearing this thing twice. So, it does not seem to have e and minus e however, you can always reverse the integration direction in one of them because it does not change the meaning of what this expression is and then you can write the q squared also as if it is integral of so integral d t q squared and there is an omega squared q squared. This also becomes equal to omega squared times integral uh, d e and times simply q tilde e q tilde minus e. So, you can recast it in that same form and then we had added uh, damping factor. which we make proportional to uh, this. So, we make it proportional to q squared. So, we add a term minus epsilon integral d t of q squared where these integrals are all from minus infinity to infinity because uh, this can be between arbitrary times, but eventually we want uh, in the Fourier transform we certainly need e going from minus infinity to infinity because otherwise we do not have Fourier transform and yes therefore, these integrals are all otherwise we do not get delta function. So, these are all integrals from minus infinity to infinity okay. good. So, this is also integral minus infinity to infinity. So, the point being that this thing added to the exponent uh, in the path integral will add a positive definite quantity uh, with a negative constant in front and it will cause damping damp at large values of t. So, uh, so damp at large values of q if if you go to large values of this q squared then this begin becomes uh, large and will uh, damp everything out. So, we do not have to worry about very large q's and you can focus on a finite region. So, thus the transition amplitude q f infinity q i minus infinity this transition amplitude becomes integral d q of e raise to i we have dropped h cross now times integral minus infinity to infinity of 
dt of uh, sorry and we are going to rewrite it in terms of E. So, becomes dE of one half um, this E squared and then we have uh, sorry this is Lagrangian not Hamiltonian. So, this is minus sign. Uh, so, there is that minus sign, but that minus sign comes multiplied with this i. So, if I have to recast this in that same line, I have to write. So, I write this uh, minus sign as i times i, take one i out. So, I will get minus omega squared but minus i epsilon times the q tilde e q tilde minus e and now we also have to introduce these terms this term q times f and that q times f we write as equal to uh, we put an overall half and we write for symmetry q tilde e forcing function tilde of minus e that will come only once, but to keep an overall factor half outside we also write q tilde minus e times f tilde e. and I can now put a big square bracket outside. Okay, so, the half multiplies all of this. Ultimately, it can also be again made a Gaussian. So, if you can just look at the structure of this, the aside from a time derivative there which in the uh, energy domain will just become multiplication by energy. This is quadratic in q or q tilde variable and this is linear in q. So, all you have to do is a term that is of the form f squared and you can make it into a complete square. So, that is what we do. By choosing q tilde e to be equal to small q tilde divided by Right, so, we have this in front, um, you pull this out, it will go below these. So, you need let us fix what this has to be. Let us see <coughs> what all is required to get it right. So, if I just take q tilde e and q tilde minus e big q tilde minus e then does the product work out to be that. So, I have pulled out this. Uh, so, it will give this term correctly and the cross term has to be q tilde e f tilde minus e divided by this which is correct and this divided by this times this. So, I will get both these terms right. So, this is the correct definition. So, we will have to just subtract the square part of this term. So, we find integral of this q f infinity q i 
minus infinity propagator becomes a uh, uh, kernel becomes integral dq of e raised to i uh, times half into q tilde e. So, this we have to change variable this we have to change to q tilde eventually, but let us write it like this right now q tilde e q tilde minus e q tilde e times. So, this we which we had taken out of course, will multiply the whole thing. So, into e squared minus omega squared plus i epsilon times q tilde minus e. So, that is one term d e and so we will try to make it q tilde e, but with some Jacobian. So, let me just say times a Jacobian. But <coughs> here we get, uh, so that got cleaned up and all we get is a this square term has to be subtracted and so in the exponent minus so uh, we uh, well, we have to draw some more or we can write times because it doesn't matter times i times and no and a half factor because that half factor is existing here as well so, i times a half times integral d e of and this f f tilde e f tilde minus e and actually the half factor will go divided by e squared minus omega squared plus i epsilon. So, put minus sign. Yeah, and now I have to argue to you that this Jacobian. Uh, oh, so actually, that this Jacobian is one. That's what we want to check, right? So what we observe is that uh, this shift amounts to. I can now Fourier transform it back. So then it will become Q of t equal to old Q of t. So now note. what we have done just take Fourier transform of this back. So, we get capital Q of big Q of t equal to the small Q of t and plus this Fourier transform d e over square root 2 pi e raised to i e t f tilde e over the e squared. So, this Jacobian is 1 because this has no dependence on Q. So, one in whichever dimensional space you want to think of some kind of infinite dimensional space, but it is still identity and therefore, likewise Well, I need not actually be too ambitious right now. All I have to do is make sure that I have changed variables from I can still write without any loss of generality Q capital Q of t that is all I write. Okay. We know that this is function of e and this is t, but we know there is a relation. So, we can always work out main thing is that we want to move over to doing an integration over big Q rather than uh, small Q. 
if we try to go from time domain to the energy or frequency domain, then again the uh, Jacobian will be variation of this with respect to variation of g tilde, which will leave behind a delta function of 0 or something, you know some in ill defined quantity, but which does not depend on q itself. So, whatever that Jacobian is, is a constant. Okay. So, this constant overall constant I am not going to worry about, we will leave it outside. I do have some note here that says dq dt that is done in time domain. So, I have not checked what happens if you do the um, okay, the better better idea. The point is you leave this measure in the time domain, this you can always convert back and it will give you the usual uh, t expression, but in q good. So, we do this only this the big Jacobian we do only in the known variables and known time domain. And now observe that the front first factor the integral f tilde f tilde over e squared minus omega squared does not depend on of q and the q part so that or we can write the whole formula. So, that this expression q f infinity q i minus infinity is just going to be equal to this expression right because here I can certainly convert back to time domain without worrying and it will give me back my old Lagrangian except in the variable big Q instead of small Q and times this additional exponent e raise to i times the this term. We will next try to convert that term also to time domain. This front factor is simply seen to be the answer when forcing function is 0. So, this is with forcing function f, you can put it here and we have dropped our memory of Dirac at some point, but they are Dirac uh, bases and so that becomes equal to i over 2 and now we claim that this is going to be in time domain equal to f um, right f of t f of t prime So, both dt and dt prime
where the D is the time domain propagator. In other words, just thinking in terms of Fourier transform, this thing which is 1 over e squared minus omega squared plus i epsilon, we think of that as d tilde of e. Okay. this is easy to check right because there is both dt and dt prime so if you if you take this dt minus t prime and insert it here then uh, the denominator will not depend on the t or t prime but you can take e raise to i e t to this with this f of t and e raise to minus i e t prime with f t prime and do the dt and dt prime integrals you will just get f tilde of t and f tilde of minus f tilde of e and f tilde of minus e and be left with the denominator as is and one de integration. So, this is same as this and so that is an elegant way of recasting and this is our answer sort of. And this for the forced uh, harmonic oscillator. So, sometimes we will write uh, a short form for it which is also equal to right, this arrow goes there. So, notation is here. F of argument 1, D of 1 and 2 and second f of argument 2 and an integral over t and t prime. So, this we will use as a notation for this and we can we are still we still seem to be stuck with uh, this q f and q i which look arbitrary. So, what is actually done is also to extend the space range. So, we then define yes So, what we do is introduce a vacuum to vacuum amplitude. just for the possibility that after you have done some drama the two vacua may differ by some overall phase. So, they may not be exactly identical, but they will be same they will bo both be normalized to 1, but uh, this then is integral d q f d q i omega infinity uh, q f infinity then the q f infinity q i minus infinity and times q i minus infinity q i minus infinity to omega minus infinity.
this vacuum to vacuum amplitude is a very important concept. So that is what, so we can show that this also becomes equal to um, similar kind of thing and overall thing without any j. So this in the presence of any forcing function uh, becomes, so suppose we have we do this with the presence of f, then we would have the presence of f over here, but f is supposed to switch off at plus and minus infinity. In fact, uh, f is in time domain, so we should have said it there. Okay, at uh, t equal to, and therefore, it doesn't appear here. Does not afflict the overlap over there. So then, that factor that we have there, the f d f, just comes out of the whole thing and we get that this equals e raise to i uh, over 2 minus i over 2 is what I have minus i over 2 f d f. But this is what we wanted because we had made that uh, proposal that any averages can be calculated by varying this now with respect to this external current. So f is sometimes, well right now it is not a current, it is just a forcing function. In field theory it becomes a current. Many of these ideas were actually developed by Schwinger uh, and they have eventually come back into the although in early developments for some time it was ignored. So this idea of constructing vacuum to vacuum amplitude, writing a generating functional and uh, by introducing external forcing function with respect to which you can vary now, df varying with respect to df will bring down a, well, a q. So you can calculate a q q correlator by varying with respect to f twice. So this can be used, so this is the This is now the average, this is not quantum mechanics. So, and i's because there are i or minus i squared. And if you have any operators, all you have to do is write
right whatever power series you have in Q you just construct that same power series in variations with respect to F so you will get higher powers of variation and now that we have committed so many sins we even if you have a transcendental function all you do is replace wherever you see a Q by D by I D by D F is the same answer. Okay. So, you can calculate the average value of any operator or products of such operators by doing this.